You're listening to That Gets My Goat. Never again. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anglovich. And I'm Rish Outfield. Wow. That's a perfect impression. I don't think it is, is it? But... No, it's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, there's one thing that he's famous for saying, and I'm not going to say it. Yeah. Because for almost 30 years, that's just been an unfunny joke. Anytime somebody is calling roll, they've said that. I'm trying to remember, when would you say the last time somebody got a laugh for saying that? Who was, was president? It was shortly after the film came out, I think. Although you never know, there's probably like children that see that show for the first time and then talk about it and then suddenly it's funny again. Mm. That kind of stuff happens where people didn't know it before because they were just too young to know it when it was new. So we're back for another episode. I mean, we, we did a final episode of the 13 Nights of Halloween, and this is just kind of a another final episode. <laughs> I don't know what you would call it. That final episode took so long to edit. I finished it today. But, I mean, it was my own fault because I decided to go above and beyond on the final episode. Plus, it was like an hour and 20 minutes long, our recording session. And so most of them were, you know, between 30 and 40 minutes. And this one was double that. Yeah. The the thing that I wanted to talk about for this one, as our whole point with doing that uh, 13 Nights of Halloween was as a sort of a donation drive. And while we haven't made it to our final goal quite yet Uh, i did want to get on here and just say thanks to everybody who did donate during our donation drive um your uh, bird and ernie tote bag should be uh in the mail and (laughs) okay i'm just kidding i'm not promising a bird and ernie tote bag that's not gonna be coming but just wanted to say thanks to everybody because it's really been effective. We're we're getting really close to what we need to be able to uh, replace 08 OT. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll, I will donate then if that's the ultimate goal. No, people have been super generous and uh, more so seriously than ever before. And you know me, I hate to have to ask for donations. I, I just It always felt ingenuous. Like we weren't really doing it because we loved doing it like we weren't doing it for fun or because we were passionate we were doing it with some nefarious bottom line in mind but maybe we should have done that from the very beginning because people who had never donated before donated and then people who had felt like okay i can give them again which is great yeah it's been really awesome and we're getting really close to our goal um if you haven't donated and you would like to or you think you might we'd still like to encourage you because we haven't quite made it yet but yeah thanks a lot to everybody who did donate it really turned out i think pretty cool it's one of those things where we have a little section in the forum where we're talking just about the 13 nights of halloween it's a thread just dedicated to that and there's lots of comments on that there people are talking oh yeah this and that and no you guys talked about this and i i i was thinking this about it but then also getting the donations is like a second kind of a comment thread it's like a it's like getting likes on facebook or something you know it's like hey i like your 13 nights of halloween thanks for doing it kind of a thing you know except for actual likes you know what i mean i i never understood and i never understand people hoarding likes people desiring likes on Facebook and it's like, yeah, if if we get to 3000 likes, then we'll give you this reward kind of thing. Because yeah, I think you're in the same boat as me. Like doesn't mean anything to me. It's okay. They clicked on something, but they clicked on it anyway, just to get to our page. But it's good to have somebody say they like you. Don't get me wrong. But in this era of Facebook, like quote unquote means so much less than somebody likes you like means i agree or like means i saw this <laughs> or like means yes i recognize you exist yeah but in this case i, I was trying to come up with a good example because it's not like a comment because there's not a comment that comes with it but it's still a approval 
kind of a thing, you know. It's like we would get comments and then we'd also get donations to go along with it. So it, it, it was like double reinforcement saying, hey, 13 Nights of Halloween, good. Do more. I don't know. I figured, you know, I was even thinking, thinking next year maybe for the 13 Nights of Halloween, we can try and do... 13 really short scary stories oh where not necessarily we don't have to be the ones that write them all but we could invite the listeners to submit stories for the 13 nights of halloween that are short scary stories like a thousand words or less and yeah we could just do a bunch of stories as our thing instead of talking subjects that are halloween related we just do 13 quick stories that are halloween related instead Okay, well then, you know, that's possible because, for example, Mike, uh, Mike's plural, he posted about a little experience that he had with cats and stuff in a, a haunted house. And that would probably be something appropriate to share in an episode in the future. Right? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, totally. And yeah, something like that. Uh, just just some, some quickie, scary stories. And they could be 13 Night inspired. Like, oh, like yours was, where it was moths. As scary, which was inspired by last year's 13 Nights of Halloween, where we talked about moths as well. Some people think they're scary, but they're not. And so you tried to make them scary. They could be that way, or they could just be, well, this is a scary story and it's short. Why don't you try and run it? Uh, so was that a tangent, or is this part of this? We can leave it in. Yeah, that was I was going to suggest it, and if you thought it was a good idea, then we can say, okay, start writing your short story for next Halloween. Okay. Happy Halloween. How dare you? I had a tangent for you as well. You know how you just blanket said moths are not scary? <laughs> you know who Chucky is from the Child's Play series? Uh-huh. Here's a blanket statement. Chucky is not scary. <laughs> right? But AMC, the cable channel, and during the days leading up to Halloween, every day they would have another marathon. So it's just like the Friday the 13th marathon. And the Halloween marathon and, you know, the fill-in-the-blanks marathon kind of thing. And did a bunch of Walking Dead marathons. And on one day, they did a Child's Play marathon. And uh, I, I, I guess the TV was on and my niece was over who has red hair and I used to always compare her to Chucky. I told her, hey, change it over to AMC. They're showing the Child's Play movies. And so she turned it on there. And it was, you know, the scene where Chucky is threatening this, this little boy that's his owner or whatever. And A, he was really lifelike, really impressive. I was just like, wow, that's well done. He looks alive. And that's animatronics. And that's a puppet. And that's a doll and all that. You know what I mean? But then two, yeah. Oh, he's so, so not scary. <laughs> and my sister came in the room and she's like, what are you guys watching you know, like it was a spank film or something like that. <laughs> and I said, yeah, they, they, this one is Child's Play 2. And she's like, the kids are not to watch. Turn this off right now, kind of thing. But just the night before, she had had no problem with her kids being in the room when the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street was on. And, uh, I mean, you know, the Robert Englund Freddy Krueger is pretty scary, especially in the first movie. But the fudging Rorschach as Freddy Krueger, I can't even imagine a kid seeing that. Or a parent being okay with their kids being in the room when that's on. He was, like, pulling, like, a screwdriver out of his cheek, and he's just like... I love to molest kids. And I was just like, wow, dude. <laughs> I... I, I... You know, they took the idea of Freddy Krueger, the most unsavory aspect of the Freddy Krueger story. The one that, like, all the sequels said, hey, we're never going to mention this part. And it's like, let's do a whole movie where that's all we talk about. Well, maybe it has something to do with the fact that the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street is new. Not something that she's experienced in, but Chucky is from her actual generation. And so she sees that and like, what? This is a bad movie. Don't watch that. Children, not watch bad. <laughs> Thank you, Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> Fire bad also. Okay, well, I would like to hear your response to the Chucky blanket statement, not scary. I think I agree with that. Chucky is not scary. Because, well, I mean, there's a lot of things. It's like having one zombie chasing you. And that's all there is for the whole of the movie. You know what I mean? Because Chucky was not a fast-moving little 
doll that was like running around really quick because he's tiny number one he's like comes to the your you know maybe your kneecap so a good kick and he flies across the room and then he comes back a good kick he's back across the room kind of you know he's not a a formidable kind of a character he's not fast I guess the only thing that's really formidable about him is that he's not alive. He's he's a doll, so you can't kill him, or maybe you can kill but him. But he feels pain, and it seems like well, I mean, it's, if if he feels pain, if you can hurt him, you've already taken a couple of notches away from how scary he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like Jason or Michael Myers, it's like you could hit Jason with an axe. And he's not going to make a sound. He's not going to wince or what. You know what I mean? Uh huh. There is something scary about that. You know, about the shape, you know, you stabbing the shape or whatever. And he just like looks at the knife and then looks back at you. That's scary. I mean, and another aspect of Chucky, the fact that he swears all the time makes him funny rather than scary. Yeah, he's like the wisecracking little thing instead of a scary kind of a thing like i was saying it's like a one zon you know he's slow moving it just seems like it would be easy like zombies are scary because there's dozens and dozens and hundreds and hundreds of them and so you know yeah you can kill one zombie pretty easy because they're really slow but you get enough of them and at a certain point you're just overwhelmed there's nothing you can do you run up against a wall and there's still hundreds coming and you can't not dispatch them all your gun runs out of bullets and you know, the bat's not going to work because you don't have enough room to, to, to get them all with it and you're going to grow tired and they're not kind of a thing. So if there was thousands of Chuckies, then that would be scary. Mm. But just one little tiny Chucky? See, that seems like a 21st century thing. Like a, a remake of Child's Play. The lightning storm would happen at the end of the movie and all the Chuckies in the mall or in the toy store or whatever came to life. That actually might be a really cool sequence, you know? Now that we're in the era of the CGI Chucky, where you could just replicate him 150 times and suddenly you got a ton of Chuckies and they look like the zombies in I Am Legend. But uh, the only thing that I can think of that is scary about Chucky is that his would-be victim in the first two movies is is a child, is a kid rather than... I mean, of course he doesn't kill the kid. He kills the adults. But he's terrorizing the kid. He wants the kid's body and all that stuff. I I can see that being scary in theory. But once you see this puppet with Brad Dorif's voice, it's just... I just can't see anybody being scared by that. And then when they had him have, like, all the scars in Bride of Chucky, that might have been effective. But Bride of Chucky is even sillier because now he's a horny, swearing killer doll. (laughs) Does Chucky have red hair? I, I want to say oh, he has red hair. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's the scary part about him. <laughs> I found what's scary about Chucky. <laughs> I'm Chucky, and I'll be your friend till the end. Yeah. So, one last Halloween topic for you. <laughs> Chucky equals not scary. Which isn't to say that dolls are not scary. Dolls, the ones that like open their eyes when you tip them back or that have like some kind of uh, either hard plastic or actual porcelain faces or whatever with like cracks in them and stuff like that, that look like dead children. That's scary. Yeah. Dolls are pretty scary. Uh, Just not too long ago, my daughter had left a doll of hers either on the floor in the bathroom or inside the bathtub in the bathroom. And I was sitting on the toilet in the dark. Wait, why, why would you sit on the toilet in the dark? Uh, just because I didn't want to turn on the light. I think my wife was asleep in bed and I didn't want to wake her up. I mean, it wasn't like pitch dark. It was like moonlight dark, kind of a dark. You know, you could still see. And I saw this doll down there and I picked it up and then, yeah, the eyes open or whatever. I'm like, yeah, this is creepy. Cool. And I'm just like, man, I got to get this thing out of here. I don't want it around. I want to get it out of here. And it started to wriggle. <laughs> I expected it to. But yeah, you know, something was really weird. Is like, I want to say this was last night. I was putting my son to sleep and he has all these stuffed animals that we got from Kohl's. They do this little thing where they sell stuffed animals that go along with a children's book. 
and then like they donate the proceeds to some kind of charity of some sort. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, they had Dr. Seuss ones that you could get. And my wife's like, oh, we can do his room up all as a Dr. Seuss room. And so she had this idea that she was going to do that. So she bought the cat in a hat and she bought Horton and there was an alligator. It's the alligator that's from the ABC book. And then there's this yellow dude. I, none of us can figure out what book he's supposed to be from. We're like, oh, maybe he's a Sneetch because they were yellow. And then, but he doesn't have a star for one. But he doesn't look like a Sneetch. It's not even a bird. It's a dude. And we can't we can't figure out what the heck he's from. But he's from us. He looks very much like a Dr. Seuss character. But I have no idea what book he may be from. But anyways, all these ones were sitting up in his windowsill when I was putting him to bed the other night. And I'm rocking back and forth. And there's a light on from... He's got this little thing that music plays from. And it has like flashing lights on it. And I swear the flashing lights made it look like the alligator's eyes moved while I was sitting there rocking him. And the funny thing, though, on top of that is that night he woke up in the middle of the night was crying, which he does every night. He winds up in our bed every night. So that wasn't unusual. My wife went in to get him and she said that he was standing there looking at the window, which is where all those (laughs) stuffed animals were on the windowsill. And he was like looking at it and he was acting scared and she couldn't decide whether he was seeing the stuffed animals and he was scared of them or if it was something that he saw out the window or what. That made me think, wait a minute, I swear that the alligator's eyes moved when I was rocking him to sleep. Is that alligator like getting up and torturing him in the middle of the night while he's asleep? Creepy. See, I think there's a story in that. (laughs) Yeah. But but instead of the alligator... You've already set it up perfectly with there's a stuffed animal that's a character, but it doesn't belong with any of these books. You know what I mean? He's like, we got it, but it's not a, from a Dr. Seuss book. I don't know where this guy came from. You know, there's something <laughs> wrong with that doll, that the mystery doll. I, I, and she assumes you bought it, and you assume she did. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing is pretty, especially like with the light you know shining on them or something at night and and putting the shadows and making their eyes look like they're moving or following you or something like that but yeah dolls are definitely creepy chucky (laughs) i think it's just because they made him yeah very not like jason he's not you know unstoppable force that's quiet and menacing he's yeah i'm chucky i'm gonna swear and say a funny joke and fart which yeah he's not scary anymore He's already a tiny little doll that should be easy to dispatch. So you can't take away the creepiness uh, of him. You know, that's not to say that those movies suck. He has a personality. There is something affable and likable about Chucky. Uh, and, and just the fact that they decided to make a horror movie mocking the uh, My Buddy dolls. <laughs> and then it, it became this franchise that's like six movies long. That's kind of neat to me. My buddy dolls. Do, now, okay, let, in case somebody is not from our country or is young, right? Is it possible that young people listen to our show? I'm sure there's probably a few. I don't know how young you would call a young person, but I think even somebody 10 years younger than us probably has no idea what a My Buddy doll is. Yeah, My Buddy was not successful. It was <laughs> It was a flash in the pan kind of thing. It was one of those dolls or toy lines that was around for like a year, a year and a half, and then it was gone and forgotten. But do you remember who my buddy was was geared toward? Well, it was geared toward boys, and it had that song from the commercial that was like super, super catchy, so everybody can sing. Everybody who's ever seen the commercial can sing the song. Probably the whole thing, like word for word. I, I bet we... I think we should test that. You theory. and I can probably still sing... I mean, I can remember my buddy and me like to climb up a tree. My buddy and me, we're the best friends it could be. My buddy. And then then they came out with another version of it. Wherever I go, he He goes, goes, my buddy, my buddy, my buddy, buddy, my buddy and and me. From Galoob. (laughs) Was it Galoob? I don't know. I just... (laughs) Felt like saying that. (laughs) That's the worst name of a toy company. (laughs) 
It sounds like like a, a foreign word for booger or something. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, shoot, I've got a galoob in my Spogratsk. <laughs> but they also came out with the, like, a, six months later or whatever, they came out with the girl version, which was Kid Sister, and they used the same song. Kid Sister, Kid Sister. She's not as good as my buddy, but she won't make you look funny in the playground. It's funny, not too long ago, what we saw the there was a thing, one of those lists on the internet, <laughs> where it said, like, 10 toys from your childhood that might have made you gay. <laughs> and my buddy was one of those on the list. But yeah, there were some shockingly questionable toys in the 80s <laughs> that we didn't think about in those days but once you put that into your head you're just like wow there's no other use for that and it's like baby's first butt plug and you're just like why from galoob <laughs> anyway yeah my buddy was a large doll like two feet tall right yeah it was pretty big and you were supposed to carry it on your back or hold it or walk around holding its hand and have it on your shoulders like it was like a little brother kind of thing but yeah, it was for boys, and I don't, I can't think of them ever marketing a doll for boys before that time. Maybe there were, maybe there were some dolls that wet, or you know, <laughs> dolls that would cry, or whatever like that. But if it was a doll don't... for boys, the doll didn't just wet; it crapped. Diarrhea. <laughs> dolls were always for girls, and somebody somewhere decided, let's try a doll that's for boys. And the boys in the commercial, you know, had a new best friend. And all that. And I think they may have had a cartoon. <laughs> Probably. Everything had a cartoon. In, in those days, so. yeah. The, the floodgates opened. Because during the Reagan administration, he lifted this ban that had existed on how frivolous children's entertainment could be. And one of the rules had been, you know, it can't just be a commercial. It can't be a 30-minute tie-in to a comic book or a, a toy or a game or something like that. But as soon as that was lifted... Like, suddenly we had video game-inspired cartoons. Suddenly we had just rows and rows and rows of action figure cartoons. Which I, I look back on fondly, some of those. But, yeah, a lot of people said, you know, that was the end, man. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, parents groups, I think, that tried to... That were up in arms and tried to get that changed back to stop the TV shows being commercials. But I loved G.I. Joe, dang it. But those damn parents groups, they're the ones responsible for the endings of like He-Man or G.I. Joe or whatever, where they had to tack on some kind of lesson. Knowing is half the battle. Yeah, it really sort of is. But yeah. anyway, how did I get on this? Oh, I just wanted to mention, okay, so the, the My Buddy thing, I did not have a single friend. I did not know a single person who had a My Buddy doll. I, I think that was just a... We just knew it. In America, at least, and it's still carried over today, although the whole My Little Pony thing seems to have broken down a lot of barriers. There are girl entertainments and there are boy entertainments, and dolls primarily are for girls. And yeah, I think that that just killed the My Buddy thing. Although it may be that in some households, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't get this kid to stop mounting his My Buddy doll. They just absolutely <laughs> loved him. <laughs> but Child's Play came out, I think, in 1987. No, maybe it was 86 or whatever, but it was just right there during that. And Chucky was a good guy doll. And he was essentially a My Buddy, except for they gave him red hair and freckles. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Maybe that can be a topic for 13 Nights in the Future. A particular thing. Scary or not scary. That would be fun. Now, we did that one time, right? Didn't we go down a list of, are you afraid of this? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. No, no. I, didn't. I don't know that we did one-word answers, but, uh, I, yeah, we did do that uh, way back when in the archives. Before there was a That Gets My Go. Yeah. Yeah, back in the dark times. I think those might have been lighter times, actually. Before the Empire. Certainly, according to that one poster, those were the good days. Yeah. So, so this was all about thanking people for donating, suggesting they continued to donate. But it seems like that there was a, a third point to this. What was it? A third goal for doing this episode. Uh, I don't think there was. 
You just like three because you need three legs for a table to stand. Okay. There are some tables that need four legs. No, they don't need it. If you place them correctly, they would still stand with three. Just, it's easier with four. A square table could still stand up with three legs? Yeah, I think so, if you placed them correctly. Do you get to place legs, or are they just built into a table? Well, the people who build them place them. Okay, yes or no, tables, scary. No, tables are not scary. Hmm. They're just utilitarian. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. Thanks, everybody, for donating. Wait, wait, this is it? We didn't have a, a, point, a point beyond just thanking and encouraging? And Chucky. Yeah, Chucky was an accident. The, the, the other thing about him was that he, through, like, black magic, had, he was the soul of, like, a serial killer, and he, he put himself into this good guy doll before he died, but then he wanted to put himself into that boy's body. And I guess that that idea is scary. The the idea of a man wanting to get into the body of a, a, a boy. <laughs> Wait, let me rephrase. The idea of a man wanting to... All right, the idea of a man is scary, really. The idea of a spirit trying to take your spirit and kick it out and take its place. That's kind of scary, to have your body possessed. To not be in charge of yourself anymore is a, definitely a scary idea. Oh, yeah, and I've written about that kind of crap over and over and over again, and I will continue to. That's a really neat idea or concept or whatever. It just whether it's something stealing somebody else's body and they're no longer that person or somebody trying to do that to you, another consciousness within your own head, that is some interesting stuff. But uh, I guess probably for another day since you're very tired. But uh, it looks like we got a couple movies coming out soon that we'll want to talk about. Yeah, we'll definitely be talking about those. There's the one that we have mentioned several times. And then, so yeah, what, Ender's Game very soon. And the week after is... Thor 2. Thor 2, thank you. And then I think right after that, there's another one too. Is it Frozen? Well, there's Frozen. What are you thinking of? There's... I think there may be another one still that we might want to talk about. I may have to start going to movies again. It's been a while, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, you can look forward to that coming up soon. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening today. Thanks for donating for all those who have. And if you haven't yet, we're still open for it. We're still welcome. We still need a few more. Thanks a lot, folks. I'm Big Ankovich. And I'm Rich Hatfield. With Chucky inside him. Oh, the man has gotten inside your body, you're saying? <laughs> A lot of things happen at camp, folks. It's. Don't judge. <laughs> All right, see you later, folks. That Gets My Goat is produced under Creative Commons 3.0, attribution, no derivatives, share alike license. That means you can't sell it, but you can share it with everybody. It also means you have too much time on your hands. Knowing is half the battle. Yeah, but... Yeah, you know, the, they, they say that a lot, but they don't say that the other half of the battle is... Uh, dang, I wish I could remember. That was one of those things on the Onion <laughs> calendar. That was the the uh, horoscope, which is only sometimes a horoscope. But it's like, they say that knowing is half the battle, but they don't say very often that the other half is deployment of troops and tactical grenade strikes or something like that.